Welcome back to the Pro Series Podcast. Today is episode 108, and today's guest is Elena Capra. She is an interior designer down in Florida, and she is also a TV host um, for a show down in Florida called SoFlo Home Project. She tells me all about that, her experience in interior design, but also she's a spokesperson down at The Covering Show, so you might have seen her from there. But before we get into this episode, please like, subscribe, and review this podcast on wherever you listen to podcasts. And now I hope you enjoy episode 108 with Alana Capra. Thank you so much for hopping on the Pro Series podcast today. Excited to talk to you. We rescheduled a couple of times, but I'm glad that we were able to sit down and finally able to talk. Yes, me too. It's going to be fun. Yeah. So let's jump into it. Um, you're a designer. Let's see, where did it all start? Did it all start when you were a young child or where did that whole designer mind start? So I have been, I've always been into art and design. I mean, ever since I was a kid. So I loved anything okay. creative and anything artistic. And I did not choose to go to art school. I mean, it was always like it, my art class was my favorite class all through, you know, grade school to high school. But I wanted to go, I went to the University of Miami for undergrad and I loved it. It was an amazing experience. Um, and I, I had a double major in graphic design and advertising. So at UM, we had the opportunity to do that double major. So I was in art classes. So it was fun and it was a great way to still get the creativity in there as well as round out with other studies. And I enjoyed it. And um, I mean, I spent a lot of time doing my college dorm room, my college apartments. Those all uh, got a lot of extra design. That's when I realized I'm like, I really love this. Um, and I started thinking maybe I could do this as a career, but I wasn't sure. And so after graduating about two years, I decided to go back to design school. And that's where I really jumped into interior design. I, I really learned the basics of it. I learned the hand drafting. I learned all of the things and I loved it. And I knew that that was the right fit. Um, it immediately, it was a very like easy, natural, like kind of thought of like, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, for my career. <laughs> so I Absolutely. ended up starting out in bathroom and kitchen design and then going to full interiors. But yeah, so it started, it's always been there for me. And I think it's the kind of career that will change along the way because there's so many different facets of the industry you could choose to be in and I can continue oh, yeah. to evolve. Yeah, and your first degree with graphic design, you said advertising, right? Or is it? Oh, yes. looks like you froze mm -hmm. there. Yeah, see, yeah, so like that. So it's a that, Bachelor of Science in Communication, technically, and yeah, so those are my questions. Yeah, that's something I always wish. I went to school for interior design, but I wish I had that as like a minor because that it helps out so much when you're a designer because you're you're marketing yourself. You're you know it helps out with communication, the whole digital marketing world. So like it, it didn't go to waste. That's awesome. No. Definitely did not. I mean, I mean, it's changed so much since I was in school. So like the stuff I've learned is, you know, I, I, so many different versions ago of Photoshop and all of that. Yeah. Right. But it helped me. I mean, my business card, I designed myself and like a lot of my first, you know, ads and things. Now I work with graphic designers and I partner with them um, to do it. But and I love that, though, still, because you you see it from a certain mindset, but it's great to collaborate with others who Absolutely. have been in the field. So you started so it's, your it's first nice. job as a designer. What, did you say it was bathroom? Yes. So I started out specifically as a bathroom designer. I mean, there was no kitchen and bath. It was okay. Just bath. <laughs> so for me, I when I was in design school, I took a class that was very much geared towards NKPA, NKBA principles and guidelines. So it was, we used actually an NKBA book. It was called Bathroom Basics. And we learned the drafting, um, all of the all of the way to do the documents, the drawings that they would, if you took the exam that you would need to do. We learned so much about plumbing and construction and electrical, all of the things. And I loved it. And um, I had a teacher of that class who, she was a certified NKBA member and, um, she kind of helped me get my first job in that industry. I worked at Expo Design Center and that was like the very start. And I started out designing bathrooms and then yeah, from and there it I mean, to That's the heart of the home, so kitchens and so bathrooms. So starting there is, you know, and then it just, a, it's like a domino effect because your customer is going to want you to do your family room and then it just keeps going on and on. 
Yeah. Yeah. So. Right. I think it's really for me, and I think this is for uh, anyone. Yeah, there is a delay. I don't know why that's doing that. Good. Sorry, there's a delay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I was just saying, I like, just, I think there kitchen was a and delay bath is the heart of the home. It, it starts a domino effect into your um, design career. When did you start on your own, making your own company and kind of going out there and marketing yourself? So it's, it's interesting because for me, I was working at Expo Design Center and um, in, I believe it was like early 2009, they, um, they closed all of the showrooms. And so that was at a time when a lot of things were closing, a lot of things were affected by the economy. And, and so, and in turn, I did not have a job. I mean, I had the opportunity. It was, when I think mm. about the opportunity that was, I think when something like that happens, you always have to see the good in that, right? So the company I worked for was closing, but it was also a good opportunity to create my own job. Not just because there were really no design jobs to be had at that time that I was, you know, had enough experience to get and whatnot, but I'd always wanted to eventually go on my own. I think for a lot of people, it's sometimes it's a scary jump to say, going from the comfort of a job where you have medical benefits and all of the security and a paycheck every week to, to jump and try to do this on your own. Well, to me, that was like a big push. I was, it was more than a jump. It was a huge leap, but not really because I had severance for two months. I had some, some, some security. And I also had mm. clients that I worked with that now became my first clients. It was a really nice way to like kind of start out because when they closed, we couldn't take finish all those jobs. So it was people were asking, can you help us? And I was like, sure, but I've never run a business before. So I kind of literally jumped right in, didn't take a day off, just was like went from one job and now this is my company. And then I, you know, started doing everything, incorporating, learning, you know, where my sources would be, partnering with installers. And Expo Design Center was an amazing, amazing um, start for me. I learned from really great people, really great reps, really great designers. Um, I worked at the location in Westbury, New York, as well as in Davie, Florida. So three years in each. And I really learned a lot. And honestly, to this day, it's really cool because so many of the people I've worked with there, both locations, I still get to work with because they're all in you know different parts of the industry and or some are also fellow designers. and. It's cool because it was like one huge family and people who really are passionate about their work and their craft. And um, I'm grateful for having had the opportunity to work there. And I'm fortunate that I was able yeah. to launch How, my business what after that. What advice do you have and, to someone um, that wants to make that jump? The and with they're working for a company years. now and they want to start their own design company. So I think, first of all, okay. I think my, my biggest thing is intern first, like if they, well, like if they had, make sure you see enough. So like they're already working for a company, they don't have to do that. But I, when you're just starting out and you think you want to start a company, I always tell people intern with small businesses, intern with a bigger firm, find out what works for you. So if you're, if you're still in school and just starting the more you can see in your field about how day-to-day -day operations run is going to help you decide, hey, I want to be a sole proprietor or maybe just have a few small coworkers or I want to be at the big firm. So there's, there's a fit for everyone, right? And then if you're at a job currently and you're thinking about leaving sure. and starting your own thing at one point, I would say make sure. So there's never really a right time. Like sometimes it just happens and you, you go for it and that's what you're doing. You could read about so many entrepreneurs who've had that then you also read about those who, um, when they are starting out, they're working their day job and then they're working, they're hustling their at night, they're working and doing their second job. So maybe taking on a client, maybe taking on a side project, whatever, just to get their feet wet and start mm. that. I think it's good to be able to really, you got to see a lot and know if it's right for you. Uh, working for yourself is a lot of work. We all, mm -hmm. all of us who do it know it. And, um, but and it's not for everyone, but if you think it's for you, you have to at least try. And I always encourage everyone to try and, and give it a go and see if this is something you really want to do and 
take the time that's to very important when you say mentors that's tell me something about that because there's a lot of people that i know of designers that come research. out of store they you know as you're young you think you know everything you, you want to you just want to dive in when you're looking for a mentor what did you look for or what do you advise someone maybe just coming out of school to like who do i look for for a mentor in this world to help me with my design business So, and that's such, it's such a good question. And that's something so important. And I think not only in the design business, but in any business, right? Having, and, and it might be more than one. I feel like I've had several different mm. people throughout my career, some that I'll talk to about certain things. And now after doing this 20 years, a lot of, it, it, sometimes it becomes not necessarily mentors, but industry friends. I have a ton of friends in the same industry, you know, and they're all business owners and surrounding yourself with people at that point, then you kind of become peers and you just talk about things and help each other in different ways to grow and overcome obstacles and things like that. But when, you know, you're at the point where you're thinking about getting a mentor, I mean, I always think it's great to go to industry events, um, talk to people. If there's student chapters in your school, go and network. You will meet other people who have been in business for a long time or who work for firms or companies or brands. And you can see who you click with. I think, um, it's very much, much like, you know, kind of clients hiring you. It's a, it's a connection. You click with them or you don't. And it's the same thing. I think you'll feel that and you'll, you'll kind of say, oh, this is someone I'd like to ment be my mentor. And even an internship is a great springboard to almost a mentorship because you think about that, you might really bond with the people that you're interning with or one specific person at the firm and, and keep in touch. And, you know, that it's really important. I think to be able to talk to other people in business, talk about all the good things and all the things that could also go wrong along the way. I think we, you want to be open to everything. And I think the more knowledge you have and the more people you network with, it's always about networking, whether you're a student, whether you're working for a firm or company, whether you're a business owner and beyond Like you should never stop because we continuously and always connect with others. And that helps us. Oh, we, definitely. We're all stronger, we like we kind of talked off camera about some of the connections that we people, had with organizations and Everyone how wins important from those they are and how many shows you go to in a year, um, which is crazy. Um, but tell us a little bit about that and why do you, I mean, you kind of explained it's networking, but why else is it so important for you to join these like K NKBA and um, coverings and all these different shows and these networking events? Why else is it so important for a designer to join? So there are two different parts of that, Eric. So we got, okay, the first thing is the professional organizations. That is key. From day one of when I started my business, when I didn't have a portfolio and I didn't have a website and I didn't have years and years of experience. I, at the time, I had I had gotten my certifications to be a certified kitchen designer and bath designer with NKBA earlier on in my career. And I knew that those would be a pillar of uh, that to be able to say, hey, I'm an expert in this. I might be younger in the industry and new to the industry as I was at that time, but I've taken tests that show I know how to design a safe space and make it beautiful and functional and all of these things. So those certifications helped me early on to gain clients and gain their trust. So being a professional member and a certified member of NKBA was very, very important to me from the beginning of my career. And I always knew I wanted to be certified. So this way I could have that weight as more of an expert and a qualified designer in that part of my field. Um, I'm also an, an allied member of ASID. I more recently joined that organization. I think it's great to be involved in more than one trade organization if you can in the industry. There's so many, we overlap. Some of us are working on the whole home. Some are just working in kitchen and bath. Some are, some are just, you know, just doing the furnishings. It's mm -hmm. opening up your pool to more people, more vendors, more, um, more networking opportunities. So it's great to be part of those, but the trade shows are another big part of that. So we talk about KBIS, the kitchen and bath show. We talk about coverings, tile and stone show. We talk about, there's some other ones. I am also, um, I'm a, going to be attending the decorative plumbing and hardware association, uh, conference. I'm, 
on the product of the year committee with them. That's a whole other uh, show and conference mm -hmm. within the trade. I just got back from Design Edge in Houston, which is another great regional show that brings together the best of kitchen and bath and home furnishings. So talk about two industries kind of merging together. It's sort of like a, a little mini trade show regionally, and then you'll go to Cavus and you'll go to High Point. So this is key manufacturers selected and you get like kind of a preview. It's very nice. And I love attending these shows. Not only does it give you FaceTime with brands and manufacturers and sometimes key executives, you get to reconnect with your peers, meet new people, see new product. We, people are hiring us as designers and they want to know that we have our pulse on the industry. We know what's new. We know what the greatest and latest things are. And when you go to these shows, you see that and you get to bring that to your clients. Like, hey, I just saw this product. This is gonna solve the problem. This is gonna be great. You're gonna love this. The, it's it's a win-win. I will go to so many trade shows a year and it is so, so worth it. And I keep adding more because I think you can never really stop learning about things in your industry. It doesn't matter how many years you're in the industry. You should always continue to gain your product knowledge. Oh, absolutely. You need to, to stay open-minded. And, to continue to see what's new. and really Technology any industry, so once you stop, in our um, close like off your mind, you're not constant. learning anymore. You, you you're doing a disservice Otherwise, to your customers, which you know, is you're gonna fall huge. Behind. And I loved how you explained not just the shows, but networking, not networking in a way to find a job because you're not always trying to find a job, but you're, you're also trying to find the new vendors in the area, or maybe there's a rep there that's selling a product that could be solving an issue that you have like right now or down the line. So, I mean, it's always important to do that. I think there's always a stigma of joining a club. I think you go back to high school type of thing, but it's not like that with at least in the design right. stuff in, um, in here up in Pittsburgh. I don't know if it's down there in Miami, but it's, um, such a great thing and great thing for anybody to join. But I do want to get into, I've never been to Miami, but I think a lot of people think of Miami as like the fashion empire, like everything aesthetically pleasing. But I think it's anything aesthetic. I think design too is incredible. And I want to jump into your show that you host. Um, and just let's talk about that, how it all came about. And you're probably seeing some incredible houses down there. Oh, okay. Yes. So first of all, I, I'm, a, I'm a native New Yorker. So I came down to Miami to go to college and I was like, I love this place. I fell in love with the Art Deco styling. And when I first seen it, I, everything like in South Beach and all of the Deco style, I loved that. And it was just so different from what I grew up around. So it was something completely different. And after many years of living here, I actually live in Fort Lauderdale. I live in East Fort Lauderdale um, and I love it as well. And there's a great design community here. There are amazing and beautiful homes. And I'm fortunate I, I host a weekly home design show on ABC in Miami. It's called SoFlo Home Project. And I've been doing that for the past four years. So one day a week, we will shoot with other designers, um, architects, industry professionals. We'll go to showrooms. We'll go to trade shows. Um, we, we cover it all. And what's really exciting about this part, Eric, is that we get to not only showcase on a local level, what designers are doing in our area. Um, and we're, we're seeing everything, like we will show everything from a studio apartment on the beach to a 20,000 square foot waterfront home. So like one week we might be touring that, another week we might be in a two bedroom condo. Um, we might, and so we're really showcasing, we wanna have it be very broad, show there's, it's not just one type of design, it's modern. Then we have transitional homes. Occasionally we'll tour a traditional home. I mean, it, South Florida design tends to mm. air a little bit more modern in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area, um, but we have all types. We've toured um, out, out West. We have a lot of, um, when I say out West, I mean out West in uh, Western Broward County, which is just maybe 30 minutes from East Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we have a lot of areas where there's a lot of horses and, and whatnot, so people have, we toured a home that was like, it was like a ranch and it was beautiful. And, you know, so to juxtapose the Miami Beach waterfront home, you're touring this beautiful ranch that is in another kind of design style. And I love that we could showcase all of those things. And what's also cool is I get to bring friends on and peers and 
all these people that I've met along the way um, and new people I meet, new designer friends and new architect friends. And we all, they all just, they share their work with us. Their clients open up their homes for us to be there and to showcase it. And we're always so grateful for that. It's, it's nice to show viewers a little peek of all that South Florida design encompasses. And I also huh. love the tip shows, which we incorporated a few years ago. And two times a month, we'll do home tours. And then two other weeks a month, we'll do tip shows. And those are kind of giving viewers an inside look at what's trending in the industry. So we'll cover trade shows. We'll cover, we'll go to different mm -hmm. showrooms and show what's new in countertop trends. And we'll have experts on from the showrooms. What's new in area rugs? What's new in paint? And we've had, you know, so we've really, it just, it never stops the ideas that we could come up with because design is so broad and we've had aging in place as a topic. We've had, you know, all the different things that as designers, we might do, um, go to a conference about or CEUs oh, or yeah. attend, so you know, a if talk you're about, not, if we're not we in the in South very, Florida area, um, how can we see the, how can we watch it? I'm, I'm curious I'm in seeing so it because I, I, I love architecture, I love interior it design, and I love getting and I out of the box of Pittsburgh and seeing other design. How can we watch that? So SoFlo Home Project also has a YouTube channel. So every week a new episode is posted, usually Monday or Tuesday. You could subscribe as well. And um, yeah, we've got every episode is on there and a new one every week. So um, I look forward to uh, sharing that. And it's, yeah, it's just been, it's a really great thing to be able to showcase design. And mm -hmm. my, another thing to touch on that is that when you work in this industry, there are so many different options. You you do a podcast as well. Like people do podcasts, you could do television, you could do radio, you could do other, all these things that complement what we're already doing. Oh, absolutely. And I think people like us want to hear that. I mean, a lot, when I started this podcast, people were like, you, you're starting a design podcast. It doesn't make sense. It's a visual field. How are you going to be able to talk about this? But it's hearing the stories behind um, guests like yourself and how they got in the industry that is supposed to inspire people that are trying to get into the industry. It's not, not like exactly visual, but there's this whole inspiring part of does, just a student maybe that's struggling out there or someone that's trying to jump from their nine to five to be full time in their five to nine. So, I mean, this is just something I love. And as you, like you say, you love that. And Awesome, Melinda. Thank you so much for hopping on, taking the time out of your day to come on the Pro Series podcast. Can't wait to get this out, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>